Amen. Welcome to the film room. It's a real pleasure to have you here today. Pleasure to be here. Before we get started, um, you know, last week we did, uh, did this with Dylan and went over a number of different things that he was doing well and a couple of things that we wanted him to improve. But it's hard for you guys to obviously talk. So uh, one of the questions that I have for you is, put it this way, if you played hockey other than a goalie, what position would you play? Defender. Have, did you play ice hockey? I played a little bit. I'm really good at skating, but I'm not good with the puck. Okay. All right. Well, good. Anything else about Canada? Um, a lot of hockey. Uh, home of the Winnipeg Jets, who are actually very good right now. Yeah. And just growing in basketball. And the language in Winnipeg? Is English, but a lot of people speak French also. French. Okay. Great. All right. So now we're going to delve into the film, all right? <clears throat> so, you know, one of the things that, that I wanted to show you here today is just uh, a number of things that I think you're doing really well and, and a couple of things that I think you can improve on right away, the next game. So, you know, first we'll start with defense. And as you know, um, I think we value, value your ability as one of the best defenders on our team. And I think the, the sky is the limit for you. Obviously, Dylan's really embraced that. And again, you kind of watch Dylan on the ball, always working hard. But like Dylan, you and him kind of have, have really learned closing out with high hands and challenging shots. I mean, you took a potential catch by a good shooter and turned it into a tough shot just because of how you closed out and the pride you're taking in, uh, in disrupting him. Here you are, again, dealing with number 35, who's an excellent shooter, chasing him off the screen. Again, early high hands, and you're not a little guy. You're 6'7". You affect his shot. You jump and challenge his shot once he does. And we take a guy who, in the first half, seemed to be shooting open shots and really negated him in the second half. He did a great job. Same thing here, you know, using your size and your quickness off the ball. Like when you're in the gap, and I think we've talked more and more about this, like that doesn't mean that you can't steal a pass, and that certainly doesn't mean if he dribbles at you that you can't, you know, stunt and deflect his dribble. And on this clip right here, notice you're in great position. You hit his ball. It goes off of him. Turnover. Great job. On offense against the zone, you know, we're using you really all over the court, you know, and, and I think that you're, you're becoming more and more comfortable here in the middle. It was great to see you in the last game take advantage. And, again, you just square up, triple threat, use your size, you know, perimeter to post. I, I think you can do more of that. And I also think that just because their zone, I mean, if you look at it, it looks like man-to-man, -man, right? Mm -hmm. You can do that in our man-to-man -man offense just as easily where, you know, you get a guy into this spot and you shoot over him. But those are, those are two really good baskets. Now, what do I always tell you kind of in transition? Like if this, you know, we're in practice and as we start building our habits in transition, spacing. Uh, run to the three-point line. It's your friend. You know, and if you make one out of three from three right now, that's a great deal for our team. This shot, forget if you make it or miss it, you're, it's an 18-foot two-point shot off the run. Heck, I'd rather you either go all the way to the basket, make the one more pass, but right here, stop, take what the defense gives, shoot it with confidence. We want you to take wide open threes. You make our team a lot better when you do that. So red, all right, and that's our trap, the post, and it's something that we're going to do more and more this year with our team and our quickness. You get there quickly, right? But once you get there, man, you got to stay aggressive. Like, you got to chop your feet. You and Chase are working together. Obviously, you don't want to reach because it will be a foul. But you know this. These three guys are all thinking steal. And part of the way it's going to happen is, you see how you just kind of get out of the way there? Man, that, you want to send this guy to the bench and be super aggressive using your size and your quickness. And really, like, the ball gets to the other corner, why? It always it goes back to the trap. If we're going to do it, no different than a blitz in football, you got to go all out and try to get the quarterback, right? Let's not be one foot in, and I think the trap sets the tone for the rest of the possession. You see that? Yeah. Now, i got a couple of, of uh, some other guys that you know 
that have done it, all right? So you got Aaron Gordon here at the top. It's the same scheme. Gets there just as quick as you, and this is what I mean about staying in it. Look at the dribbler, all right? Take a really good low post player, and it forces a turnover, right? Once you get there, stay aggressive. Here it is again, Aaron Gordon again. Look, look, where, look where the ball is, right? It's right there by the bench. Makes all three of your teammates very aggressive. The trap sets the tone for the rest of the possession. This is last year, and this is a big one, as you can see. One-point game, under, under seven minutes. Right here, bottom, top of the eye, and the choker. All three guys thinking steal. But look at, look at the trap. It's the trap, and I think that's something that you're going to be really good at. The last point is this. Anytime you get a defensive rebound, you become the point guard. And your passing is one of the best things that you give our team. Don't, don't be one foot in with this either. Be more aggressive, right? You see, like, you get a defensive rebound, and it's like you're playing it safe, right? Almost like if we're going to do that, heck, I'd rather you give the ball to a point guard and run wide. Same thing here. Yeah, you push it, and that's that shot selection, right? I'd rather you shoot a three or go all the way by him. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, again, just kind of showing you the other part of it. This is Rondé, and you and him have a lot of similarities. Watch his aggressiveness. First thing is you, you got to make them stop the ball, right? These clips are from his freshman year as well. But again, he goes perimeter to post, and great move. Aaron, same thing. If they don't stop you, the more times we can get you doing that or making a pass, as you know, that's, that's like gold for our team. Again, here's Aaron off a of defensive rebound. First thing these guys are making them do is they have to stop the ball, right? If they don't stop you, then you're going to get to the rim or make a play, and you can see they're not tentative or settling. And I, I think the last part of, of this for you is when you're aggressive and confident, that's when you're at your best. And I think the post trap's an example of that, and then like the, the push off of a defensive rebound and thinking with that mindset and then adding to the things obviously that you're already doing well. Yeah. All right. Yep. What's the favorite thing in your mind playing for Sean Miller? Favorite thing? Um, definitely the defensive end just because your energy and when everyone's um, engaged and, you know, having fun with it, it's fun, fun to play basketball. They say I spit sometimes in a huddle when I talk. Do, is that true or no? Uh, depends how angry you are. <laughs> Don't ever take it personal. I'm not spitting on purpose. Yeah. Right? Uh, E-man. Welcome to the film room again, all right? Thanks, nice Josh. job.